DMAP. So uh, me and him's got to where uh, we get in trouble together and, and we do other things together. So uh, we'll now call the meeting to order. And Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Senator Funky Fromeyer. Present. Senator Howell. Senator Webb. Representative Heron. Here. Representative Petrie. Here. Representative Thomas. Present. Co-Chair Frazier Gordon. Yes, ma'am. Chair Girdler. Here. All right. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So uh, Second. Uh, nobody objects. Uh, the minutes are approved. Jenny is going to now report the information items. Pursuant to KRS 45.765, UK reported three equipment purchases funded with restricted funds. Pursuant to KRS 45.8121, six school districts, none of which needed an additional tax levy to pay debt service, report upcoming debt issues to finance new projects. The school districts were Pineville Independent, Boyd County, Clay County, Harrison County, Johnson County, and Kenton County. And pursuant to KRS 48.111-6A, the Finance and Administration Cabinet reported three advertisements for invitations to lease space with an anticipated cost above 200000 for the Cabinet for Health and Family Services. All right. Thank you, Jen. Uh, we're going to invite Meg Campbell. Uh, is she out there on La La yes. Land or she's here? All I'm right. here. She's here, right here. All right. Thank you, Meg. <laughs> uh, before you get started, uh, can I get a motion? We roll these two together. Got a motion. Representative Heron. Second. Representative Thomas. Uh, any objects? Injections? All right. Motion carried. Uh, Ms. Campbell, you may begin. So I'm reporting on the um, appropriation increase for Medical Towers 55A Vivarium. And um, the project came in over budget. It was was bid right before COVID and then came in over. So we have uh, that increased $2 million and we've covered that with internal uh, school medicine fees. And then our other, our next item is uh, a lease modification. We, we have a department that is growing. Uh, the lease will increase almost to just over $100,000. All right. Uh, we have any questions? All right. We've got a question or two. On the, um, on the construction issue, uh, it, if I remember right, um, in the materials, that started back in, in 2020 or earlier, is that correct? Yes, the grant was awarded, I believe, in 2020, but the when you submit that grant, it's almost a year ahead of that. So around 20, like late 2018, 2019, early 2019 is when we actually made this submission. Okay, so I just want you to help me understand, if you will, and I understand there's lag in, in, in federal grant program and other grant programs, but um, starting in 18 and maybe that culminated in 20, we're setting in 23, there were yes. estimates of uh, how much the project would cost, I assume in 2020 and earlier are the estimates yes. that were being used. And that is a, correct. Then we've got a three year intervening period where I'm not gonna say nothing takes place, but apparently, um, um, inflationary forces were at work um, and you have to wonder whether or not if the project had moved faster whether some of the inflationary pressures would have been avoided the we were not able to start the project until 20 late 2020 because it was awarded in September of 2020 then we had to do design documents and actually all the architectural pricing came in right it was the hvac do dollars and as that's what we're seeing across the board regardless that our hvac numbers are coming in almost double so that was our big um charge that was the bigger charge we weren't able to start you know we started the documents but it's a vivarium it's a very complex project so um 
And to be absolutely honest with you, I had to look that word up to make sure I understood exactly what that entailed, and, and now I know much more about it, but not enough. Uh, but the HVAC, we're talking about, if I remember right, an $8 million that went going to a $10 million, is that right, on the that project? Correct. That is correct. So we've got a $2 million increase primarily based on HVAC? Primarily, and then additional, there's some additional um, escalation costs in there too. I mean, there were some, the construction costs went up, but not the way that the construction costs went up around 10% that the um, HVAC costs went up 50%. It's 50% higher than what was initially budgeted. And then there were also some, she has, there's some equipment costs that had, that are in that as well. So um, the we're putting in a um, fish lab all of those aquaneering costs are gone up. So it's a it's a combination of escalation based on the original budget numbers, which were done in 18. All right, this was not a change in scope. This is mere inflationary cost, right? No change in scope. Okay. So just to clear my conscience on behalf of taxpayer money, just to make sure, or taxpayer oversight, not money, but um, uh, could this project have moved faster? We are actually ahead of the deadline date that they had that the NIH has given us by eight months. So we are we were pushing it as quickly as we could. We actually contemplated pushing it out further, hoping that we knew numbers were going to escalate. But we decided to go ahead and move forward so that we could try to get contractors. I mean, it, it, we had one bidder. We couldn't even get people to bid this project. So we were at the mercy of bidders and escalation. Yeah. Again, don't uh, don't take anything by those questions. It's to clear my conscience more than no, anything. No, that's fine. Yeah. I understand. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey. Meg, it's always nice to have an A&R chair to kind of watch over us and knows what's going on. So, And I do appreciate him. I really do. Uh, no, no. I, I completely understand. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? If not, you got one. All right. Thank you for uh, allowing further questions. Getting to the the question that I thought you were nearly there, the design versus the engineer, um, there are so many methods that can speed that process. Is that one that we might need to consider on other projects? Is the design um, necessary? Like. I recognize there's like a, and I'm not in construction, but I've been on a number of the projects where you can uh, be designing and constructing almost within the same time because there's only so many parameters that you can stretch there. Is is there a way to shorten that process? So you could, if you do design build, this is an NIH grant, an NIH grant does not allow that. An NIH grant is laid out. They give you step by step by step of what you have to do. So, for example, when we got the approval that we won the grant, they give you a window of time to get your documents together. After you get your document, you know, your first set of documents, your schematic design, then it has to go back to the NIH and they require, they will get, they tell you they will get the documents and the approval back to you from anywhere from 30 days to three months. So, once you get your documents in, and we were always trying to get them early to expedite, it still took our longest time for review and approval from the NIH was about, it was right at three months. Okay. So on a, a project that's not an NIH, yes, you can do that. But an NIH grant, they have very specific ways that you have to work. So of the 60 months that this has been underway, um, three months of a delay. Oh, no, that was just for uh, schematic design. You have, we had to submit at each phase. Each phase oh. you wait, you could wait three months between each phase yeah. before you get your approval. We only had to wait three months once. The other two times were about right at two months. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is interesting, the uh, the cost of time. <laughs> yes. The real cost of time. And, yeah, and, and we have heard back from them on this particular grant. They offer, I don't know how many CO6 grants they award each year, but um, of the others, we're trying to get more money because everybody has, has run into this with the NASH, NIH, but they're not giving any additional mm -hmm. funds. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. 
opportunity to ask. All right, thank you. Uh, any other questions for anybody? All right, if we can get a motion to approve. <laughs> And second. Got a, uh, got a motion and a second. Uh, Spoon just went out to go grab something, but this was um, rolled in with Murray State. So we All need right. to do Murray State, then we can vote. <laughs> we have I'll got. Withdraw, I'll withdraw the motion. All right. And <laughs> I'll. <laughs> yeah, he'll withdraw the second. We are going to do. Can you report on Murray State? Because we rolled them together there, Meg. Uh, Jackie Dudley. Oh, Jackie Dudley's going to do. Murray State. Murray State. And and Mr. Chairman, yes. Mr. Chairman, this is this is Jordan Smith from Murray State University. I'm our Executive Director of Government uh, Relations, and I have with me Beth Ward, our Director of Procurement, and we're actually here on Vice President Jackie Dudley's behalf. All right, then you may proceed. All right. Well, we uh, we have on the. We lost you. Looks like we may have lost Jordan. Um, so this is also related to an NIH grant. Uh, this is for a Zeiss uh, my microscope. Um, would be used in our biology department in some genetic research um, uses. Um, the microscope, total cost of the microscope is $587,682. Um, the NIH grant will fund all but $50,000 of that uh, microscope. The other 50,000 is being funded by direct cost accounts related to those federal grants. So there's no university money being used here. This is all um, federal grant money through NIH. All right. We have any questions? All right. Now I will entertain the motion for that again. Uh, Representative Petrie, second for my co chair. Uh, Madam Secretary, will you please call the roll? Senator Funky Frommeyer. Yes. Senator Howell. Senator Webb. Aye. Representative Heron. Yes. Representative Petrie. Yes. Representative Thomas. Aye. Co chair Fraser Gordon. Yes. Chair Gardner. Aye. All right, thank you all. Uh, thank you. Now, we're going to get a lease report from uh, Elizabeth Baker, and we're going to roll these together. So if I can get a motion to roll these. Motion. Got a motion. Second. Got a second. All right. Uh, you may proceed, Miss Baker. Hello, how Hello. are y'all? Hey. <laughs> we have four leases that we're requesting approval of. The first one is for 7,893 square feet for our Kentucky Injury Prevention Center in Fayette County, Kentucky. The annual cost is not to exceed $130,234.50. The second lease is for uh, UK Healthcare King's Daughters Pediatric Clinic. This is for 6,851 square feet of clinical space in Ashland. The annual cost is not to exceed $133,041.44. The third is a renewal for, and this is for UK Healthcare's Administrative and Financial Services. We have them off campus to have more room for a clinical. This is for 100, this is three adjacent buildings totaling 101,264 square feet of office and administrative space in Lexington. The annual cost is $2,744,254.40. The fourth lease is an addendum to an existing lease for our specialty pharmacy services. They are leasing space in Lexington on Wellington Way. It's 35,219 square feet. And the services they offer have increased significantly. And their clean room or their cool room wasn't staying cool enough. And we had to install some additional cooling equipment to serve just that area. It only doesn't serve any other part of the building 
just the clean area. The uh, cost, the annual cost of this lease will be $1,360,000. All right. It's my birthday and everybody's well, uh, happy birthday. uh, giving me birthday <laughs> thing and I've got turned off. That was my son. Uh, when it's your birthday, you should be birthdayed all week. <laughs> well, you know, when you get my age, you're just tickled to death to get there, <laughs> not afterwards. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I'm rattled now. Uh, anybody got any questions for her, Miss Baker? All right, Meg. Okay, so I we have a lease with the Ryan White program that has expanded. There, the program the d program has grown and they have just inched over that $100,000 limit. So we are um, ex a requesting a lease modification based on that. All right, we got any more questions for any of this? All right, if not, I'm gonna entertain a motion. motion. We got a motion from Central Webb. Second. Second from my last name, first name guy. All right, and Madam Secretary, call the roll. Senator Funky Frommeyer. Aye. Senator Howell. Senator Webb. Aye. Representative Heron. Yes. Representative Petrie. Yes. Representative Thomas. Aye. Co-Chair Frazier Gordon. Yes. Chair Gardner. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Now we're going to get a report. I think we're going to switch from Janice Thomas in the chair to uh, Kevin Cardwell. Good morning, Good morning. Chair Gurley and members of the committee. Thank you. My name is Kevin Cardwell. I am Deputy State Budget Director. I've got four items I'll be presenting today in accordance oh, with good. KRS 45750. Let me stop you real quick, yes, Kevin. Sir. I'm gonna get a motion to roll these together, if I can. Okay. Got a motion, Senator Webb? Second. Got a second, uh, Representative Heron. Now you can proceed. Thank you. So as I was getting ready to say, we've got four items today. Two of them are gonna be action items and two are reporting items of pool projects. The first item to report for action is a emergency <coughs> repair maintenance or replacement project. It's for the Tourism Arts and Heritage Cabinet, Department of Parks, and it's the Jenny Wiley Marina Electrical Repair. The amount is $350,000 and it's funded from the Emergency Repair Maintenance and Replacement Account. This is to repair a failed electrical infrastructure at Dock C and eliminate the danger that's currently there by that failure. Uh, authority for this is KRS 45750 1G3 and KRS 45780. The next item is a capital construction and equipment purchase contingency fund allocation. This is for the finance and administration cabinet, facilities and support services. This is for the finance cabinet relocation in the amount of $3,533,000 to cover the associated moving costs relative to relative to further reconfiguration of the existing space on the fifth floor and file migrate mid migration services sorry to allow the new occupants to efficiently occupy the new space authority is pursuant to krs 45770 paragraph four you mean to pause there you may go ahead and do the two reports uh, we may have uh, any questions on these two all right Representative Peach. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On um, action item regarding Tourism Arts and Heritage Cabinet, Jenny Wiley Marina Electrical Repair Project, you presented on, you mentioned electrical failure, Doc C, I think is what you had referenced. Yeah. Yes, sir. When did the failure take place? Well, I'm going to have to uh, turn to a friend behind me, Sam Ruth. Hopefully he's got the, the details there. I don't, I don't have that specific date, so just a moment. <clears throat> I'm not sure his mic is on. 
All right, thank you. The need me to state my name again? Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, Sam Ruth, Commissioner for Facilities and Support Services. Um, the first we learned about it was April of this year um, uh, when there was some arcing in the water uh, that was, was seen. Uh, and from that, parks reacted and started shutting down access to Dock C. I know there was additional money let this last session, part of it on Jenny Wiley. Was this anticipated to be included in electrical upgrades and this just hastened this particular issue? Or was this a completely unaccounted for system failure that would not have been on anyone's radar previously? I'm not aware of any uh, project that was going to upgrade the, the electrical system until the, the failure. Okay. I'm not aware of it. Uh, parts okay. would probably Fair have enough. a better idea. Fair enough. Thank you on that one. I've got another question on the capital construction, finance, and admin. If you want me to continue. That'd be fine. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cardwell, on um, I'm trying to better understand the uh, what we have is action item 6B, capital construction equipment purchase. It, regarding the move, is this from Annex to Miro? Yes. Yes. Okay, um, and that was completed about how long ago? Uh, we're, we're still in the process. We've broken into two phases. Uh, the, the move happened, I think every, everybody was out of the annex in December, uh, and, and we had to construct some offices very, very quickly to get people in, uh, and now we're going into phase two, which is rearranging the current furniture to get departments set up. Uh, we're going to be building a couple of uh, uh, offices uh, that weren't in existence. It was a basically a, a cube farm with a few offices. Now we're building some additional offices, so that's phase two. And the total price on this was proposed uh, three million five thirty-three for additional offices. Uh, well, we, lighting, sprinkler systems, uh, it's, it's an underfloor plenum. Uh, we, had to, we were thinking we could just move some of the VAV boxes, uh, but the system is so old we had to replace some of the VAV boxes. Uh, so it, it was more than just mo building some offices. Uh, there was file storage, uh, some secure data uh, for, I believe, the controller's office. So this is more than just a couple offices. So with if this is a, if this three million goes through, in addition to what was previously expended, would run us up to what kind of price tag? Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. I, I believe we had a item previously reported that was nine hundred seventy one thousand eight hundred. So you right add those two together. Or around four, four mil mark, mm -hmm. is that right? And this is phase two? Yes. And phase three? Not one. There will be no phase three? I sure hope not. There is no anticipated <laughs> planned or hoped for phase three? No. This, is con this concludes the move, no more furniture, no more lighting, no more walls, no more, we're finished? We're finished. Can you place them under oath? Just make sure not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to get this done, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Senator Webb. Thank you. Um, I apologize. That was thrust upon y'all in, in a fashion where you had to really scramble to get that done. Did you have any projections when we forced your move? Uh, about how much it would cost or did you have any idea at all did you present an if you presented it i've forgotten it uh, any projections on the anticipated move I, I i don't think there's any way we could have could have known because it was you know it, it was basically move out of the annex you got to be out by december uh, and so we started packing boxes that was my recollection sorry that happened to y'all thank you all right we got one more question great follow-up on that um I've got a feeling that the renovated floor at Miro Street is a much better accommodation than where you were in the annex, would be my guess, or to be renovated floor. Uh, 
people don't like to move. Well, so I understand if you, that. If you took a poll, I, I think you, people would say I'd want to be in the annex. You like, uh, you like this location better still? Yeah. I, Are you asking for an invitation back? Uh, the, um, the, uh, the, you know, people had offices here. Sure. Uh, they're moving into, a lot of people are moving into cubicles that had offices. Uh, so there's some you know, growing pains with it, uh, but it's, it's a nice building, it really is. Uh, it's an old building, not as old as this one, but. Plentiful it, parking. <laughs> yes, it, it does have plenty of parking. <laughs> Very good, thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, we need to. You've already rolled it. We just need to vote on it. All right. Uh, we're going to vote on this, and I was going to comment that uh, when Kevin got here, he had hair, and uh, <laughs> so uh, I'd stay away from him because you you're getting I, there I, too. I've, I've been sitting too close to him too long. Uh, so. uh, 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 can I get a motion? Got a motion, Senator Webb. Uh, Representative Heron, second. Madam Secretary, call the roll. Senator Funky Fromeyer. Uh, Senator Howell. Senator Webb. That's Kevin. Representative Heron. Yes. Representative Petrie. Yes. Representative Thomas. Aye. Co-Chair Frazier Gordon. Yes. Chair Girdler. Aye. <laughs> All right. Now you may proceed with the pool allocation. Thanks, sir. So last two items are just reporting of pool projects, excess of a million dollars. Uh, reporting this in accordance with the current budget bill, House Bill 1, Part 2. Tourism, Arts, and Heritage, both of these are from the Tourism, Arts, and Heritage Department of Fish and Wildlife. Uh, they're both FILO. The first one is Dodge Gap Jefferson County Memorial Forest Project. The amount of that is $2.1 million, and it's funded from the Department of Fish and Wildlife fees in lieu of stream mitigation pool. Um, this project it will restore and protect over 17,300 linear feet of stream habitat in the Salt River service area. Second reporting is also, as I said, a Philo project, Ferguson Creek project in the amount of $2.5 million uh, from fee in lieu of stream mitigation pool. Uh, and this project is in Livingston County, it's Ferguson Creek. Uh, project will restore and protect over 70 acres of wetlands in the Lower Cumberland River service area. Uh, have any questions? No questions? Uh, Ms. Senator Funky Fromar. Thank you. Because I'm new, I tend to ask a few more questions. And uh, just to better understand, in projects like this, are there um, students that are involved any of our university students that might be pursuing conservation or pursuing these sorts of degrees, does that help us manage the cost of some of these projects? I would not have the I would not have the answer to that. And I'm is there anyone from tourism here today? I didn't have a name for tourism. I, I think Ms. Webb may have a Okay. Thank you. Can y'all hear me? My name is uh can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes. My name is uh, Jesse Bowles with Kentucky Fish and Wildlife uh, Wetland and Stream Program. Um, I'm a project manager here, um, and I'll be the project manager for both of these projects. And um, we typically don't involve uh, students or universities in our everyday projects, but sometimes <clears throat> we do contract uh, through different universities to do monitoring or studies as part of our program. So, part of our right. projects. You've got a you've got a, a fan over here, Senator Webb, so she can help you out anytime. You want to say anything? I'll just add to that. These philo projects are federal and they're highly regulated projects to restore uh, habitat, and it, there's a structure you have to operate in that's pretty stringent in order to re retain that money and get that money. And uh, like he said, you know, they they do include universities and projects for monitoring, but. Uh, it, it's uh, I'm just glad to see the money moving uh, y'all we've got funds that are backed up there and uh, we're just glad to see these projects going so thank you all right any more questions Senator from Fomar go ahead how can we uh, again thinking uh, from a taxpayer perspective and of course we're also federal taxpayers so these are federal dollars that we've all paid into um, how can we maybe uh, coordinate with our 
educational system. We have a priority for education in Kentucky as well. I just see this as such a tremendous opportunity for workforce preparation, and you then graduate people that actually do have experience being good stewards of federal projects as well as state projects. Sure. And uh, actually, I was a, a student at UofL when, when I learned uh, and started co oping in this program, so I'm definitely a benefit of that. Um, but and I was mistaken. We actually do uh, some of the different contracting with different universities on uh, different portions of our program. We're actually doing an after action review uh, with the Army Corps of Engineers on our program. And we're actually contracted through the University of Kentucky on that. And actually in the University of uh, we're using the University of Louisville on a few projects as well. They are our lead design team. Um, as far as getting more students involved, I mean, we can. Uh, think about that and pass that along. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how to do that exactly, um, but I definitely will consider, I mean, thinking about it and pass that along. Thank you. And thank you for sharing that you had that co-op experience as well. That's excellent. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? All right. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Scott Aubrey. You got La La Land, Scott? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. All right. We've only got one item for you, I think. Right, Scott? I have three items to report today, I believe. All right. So we'll roll those. Just to... reporting them. Oh, you're just reporting them. All right. We don't need to roll anything. Right. Go ahead. Okay. The first item I have is a modification of the original emergency lease for the Department of Corrections in Graves County. The Division of Real Properties advertised for long-term temporary lease office space. Since only two agencies lease space instead of the four original agencies, we modified the original emergency lease. The only response received was from the current lessor. Therefore, the lease modification was entered into March 16th of 23 for 2,919 square feet of office space at $16.80 per square foot for a total annual cost of $49,039.20 and is set to expire on June 30th of 2023. The second item I have is a modification of the original emergency lease for the Cabinet for Health and Family Services in Graves County. The Division of Rural Properties advertised for long-term temporary lease office space. And since only two agencies leased the space instead, instead of the original four agencies, we modified the original emergency lease. The, the only response was received from the current list, so we're, therefore this lease is modification was entered into March 16th of 23 for 7,410 square feet of office space at $15.25 per square foot for a total annual cost of $113,002.52 and will expire June 30th of 2024. The last item is a new lease for the transportation cabinet in Breathitt County. Temporary housing was needed for families whose houses were damaged by flooding that occurred in July of last year. The lease properties provide sites with basic utility hookups to place non-congregate shelters. Therefore, leases were procured through non-competitive negotiations. As a result, the Commonwealth entered into a lease for 45 suitable lots. The lots are leased on a month-to-month -month basis at a cost of $100 per site per month and may be canceled without cause by giving 30 days written notice. All right, uh, any questions for Scott? That looks like you did a real good job. So we thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Next, we're going to have a report from Office of Financial Management, and we're going to have several witnesses, it looks like. Uh, but we're going to roll, uh, I'd like to get a motion to roll the loans and the grants into one call vote if we can. Motion. Got a motion from my co chair. Oh, awesome. All right, we got. Finally, forced Representative Petrie to second it. Thank you. Uh, if there are no objections, we you, we all may proceed. It's Sandy. Hmm? It's Sandy. Sandy's first. Thank you, Chairman Gertler and members of the committee. I'm Sandy Williams, Executive Director with the Kentucky Infrastructure Authority. Pursuant to KRS 224A100, the authority will present three loans and four grants for the committee's review. First is a Fund B Infrastructure Revolving Fund loan, Mayfield Electric and Water Systems Fund B loan in the amount of $8 million 
is for their Pilgrim's Pride substation project. This project is the construction of a 69-13 kilovolt electric utility substation along with approximately a half mile of 69 kilovolt transmission line. Uh, the distribution lines will be added to serve the new load and to integrate the substation into the distribution right. system. This will be a 20 year loan with a half percent interest rate and was approved at the May 4th KIA board meeting. The next two loans are Fund F loans. Um, these are Drinking Water State Revolving Fund. The first is the City of Harrodsburg's Fund F loan in the amount of $4,280,000 for the construction of their water main and water hydrant replacement project. The project is the replacement of approximately 19,000 linear feet of various sized water mains. There will be a replacement of 50 water hydrant assemblies and installation of valves between the hydrant and the water main. In addition, the project will include the rehabilitation of three storage tanks and replacement of 40 water meter meters. Many of the city's existing water lines are compromised. Um, they're old and unlined galvanized and cast iron pipes, which are subject to corrosion and have low pressure, and they require continuous repairs, which leads to excessive operation and maintenance costs. This project will alleviate those concerns. This 20-year loan will have an interest rate of 1.25% and was approved at the May 4th KIA board meeting. The last loan is the Northern Kentucky Water District's Fund F loan in the amount of $4 million, which will be used for construction of the Newport and Ovation water main replacement project. The project will involve replacement of approximately 25,000 linear feet of aging water line that experiences a high incidence of breakage and low flows. Water mains will be upgraded to the minimum standard size to improve system capacity and redundancy. The overall project will reduce water main breaks, water loss, service disruptions, and limit the possibility of contaminants entering the system. This 20 year loan will have a 2.25% interest rate and was also approved at the May 4th KIA board meeting. The four cleaner water grants um, for the committee's review today um, two of those grants are from fiscal year 21. They are project reallocations to the same utility within the same county that had, previous, uh, that had previously been reported to this committee. The two grants from fiscal year 2022 are also project reallocations to the same utility within the same county. One of those grants had previously been reported to this committee and is designated as a reallocation. And Senator Webb, I would like to report that one of those um, utilities is, I believe, in your district. And that concludes my report today. All right. Uh, we've got a couple of questions. Only thing I've got a concern about is you keep replacing all these old things. And I'm 68 <laughs> years old today, and you keep reminding me that I'm replaceable. So it's, it's really, I've got some PTSD over this. So, uh, uh, Senator Fromeyer. Do we uh, refer to you as the old pipes or? Yeah, which, yeah, which yeah, yeah. My pipes are uh, frozen in my head somewhere. Um, Sandy, thank you for this detail. When, um, this is part of my Senate district too. Thank you, this Northern. That. Yeah, with the ovation in Newport. And when um, I was looking at the the comparison of the three, the eight million that will have a half a percent interest, and then the 4.2 that will have 1.25, and then the 2.25, what, what um, determines the differences on the interest rate? Yes, ma'am, thank you. That's a really astute question. Um, so we do offer different interest rates um, here at the Kentucky Infrastructure Authority, and it's based on the system's median household income. So for systems that have a, a, an MHI at or above the state's MHI, they get our standard interest rate, which is the highest rate. Um, if the utility uh, service area has an MHI between 80% of the state up to the state's MHI, they get a lower rate. So that would be that middle rate you see. 
And then uh, below 80% of the state's MHI is that third or lowest interest rate um, that we do offer. And Sandy, would you mind sharing that number? What is the current MHI? It is, um, so if you if you will allow me to paraphrase, it's 52,000 and change. <laughs> okay, and change, okay. <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. All right, Representative Petrie. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I need you to help me understand something, okay? And this is not a setup, this is informational is what it is, okay? Um, I'm In some of the summary that I'm looking at, there's a reference to a principal forgiveness component with each of these three loans, and they vary in amounts, and somewhat like the question of Senator Frommeyer, so, what factors or consideration goes into um, how those are categorized and how they're handled with the amounts, if any, of principal forgiveness, uh, please? Just a summary of it would be great. Yes, sir. Again, another astute question. I guess that means everybody's paying attention, which is good. <laughs> um, so similar to the 